Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. Today, another episode brought to you. Today, Daniel Jones, injury, neck strain, diving headfirst into defenders. What the hell is this guy thinking? If you watch the clip, I posted it on my Twitter feed. Holy shit, the guy does not know how to slide. I don't understand what is so difficult about sliding feet first. Instead, this guy literally nose dives as if he's diving in the Olympics. I don't understand why he does this. I don't understand why he wants to put himself in danger. All of his injuries up to this point have been results of him running the football, whether it be the hamstring injury against Cincinnati last year, whether it be the ankle injury, whether it be the concussion against Dallas, whether it be the next string he picked up um, this past weekend um, against Philadelphia. Always him running. He, tr- he draws too much of contact to himself. He's not a smart runner. He's got to go down. He's got to protect his body. He's got to get the freak out of bounds before he hurts himself again. I don't understand it. He thinks he's Superman or something. Um, He's got to really protect himself, and I think he's done a really shit job doing that, and it really pisses me off because he's our starting quarterback, and you cannot afford to have your starting quarterback miss games in the NFL. You can't do it. The second your starting QB goes down, your probability of winning goes from already 5% because you're the Giants to 1% because you're the Giants and without Daniel Jones. you know It's a big problem. The Giants need to get this guy to learn how to slide, not head first, and we also want to talk about Joe Judge answering a big question about why the hell Nate Solder is still playing. Where is Matt Pert? Why isn't he playing? The the answer he gave was wildly vague. Before we dive into this stuff, though, Anthony, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm all right. I mean, I'm a little disappointed. I'm going to that game on Sunday, and now it seems like Daniel Jones probably isn't going to play. I didn't exactly expect to spend all that money and watch Mike Glennon. So I'm not really too excited to go down to Miami and watch Mike Glennon throw the football around on Sunday. But it is what it is. I'm sure I'll have a fun time anyway. Hopefully Daniel Jones is able to play somehow, some way. Hopefully this injury isn't too severe, doesn't linger, doesn't cause him to miss too many games. But listen, the guy doesn't know how to slide. He's constantly putting himself in harm's way. I mean, we can talk about the bad offensive line all we want. The offensive line has never gotten Daniel Jones injured. You know, it's never been so bad to the point where he takes a big hit and gets hurt. Anytime he takes a big hit in the pocket, he seems to bounce away just fine. But when he's running outside of the pocket, diving headfirst into defenders, that's when he gets hurt. And that makes a lot of sense. Maybe he should stop doing that. Maybe the Giants should have told him to slide weeks and weeks and weeks ago. And I know that they have. So I don't understand why he just can't slide. If he were to slide, he would reduce a lot of injuries, a lot of fumbles as well. He just needs to learn how to slide. I I really don't understand it. And now, again, I mean, this makes you appreciate the long legacy of Eli Manning. 16 years, never missed a game due to injury. Now you're talking about Daniel Jones. Three years in, he's missed a game due to injury every single season if he does miss a game for this next strain. So not encouraging, not exactly what we wanted from our franchise quarterback potentially, and not exactly what we're used to as New York Giants fans considering we were blessed with Eli Manning for so long. But it is what it is. We're in this predicament. We're in this situation. Hopefully Mike Lennon can step in there and make the most of it. Hopefully. I mean, look, the, <laughs> Kadarius Tony had his best game with Mike Lennon at quarterback. So there you have it. <laughs> you know, let's see, we'll, let's see what he can do. I'm here to petition that Kadarius Tony should be the starting quarterback for this game. It can't be any worse than Mike Lennon. Um, but I will say this. Daniel Jones, his running, his his inability to protect his body, slide feet first, you know, is becoming a serious problem because he's been injured multiple times um, trying to push the pile, trying to get – it worked out against the Falcons. We were there when we saw it right in front of us. He barreled over uh, Gerald McCoy. But at the end of the day, I don't think that, you know, this is an opportunity for your starting quarterback to just go head first into defenders, especially when this free safety is coming flying full speed downhill, trying to pl- trying to, you know – wrap up your quarterback he's diving right into these tackles head first no wonder he's a week to week with a neck sprain they're saying um at least uh, jordan ronan said today that they think it's a week to week thing uh expect to see mike lennon start this sunday that's a huge difference in game plan right because freddie kitchens was running daniel jones he was getting involved in, the, in those qb draws and now you, that element is completely removed from the game no more zone options. No more <clears> – <throat> the RPOs are pretty much non-existent because you're not really scared of, him, of of Mike Glennon going anywhere. I mean, you can do some play action. You do some RPOs with uh, the running backs, but I just don't think it's the same – you know, the same kind of concept and, and hopes that Dan Jones can kind of draw attention away from, from linebackers and defensive backs. But I will say, you know – I think that the difference in, in Daniel Jones and Mike Lennon is primarily the, the running. Mike Lennon has a good arm, right? He can throw the ball downfield. He can, he's an accurate passer for the most part. He'll get the job done as a passer, but he doesn't have the same ability to move. He can't roll out with, with uh, speed. It's going to be tough, man. Like this, another, another game where the offensive line is going to really 
crush us. Um, backup quarterbacks come in, but if you have an A-plus offensive line that can protect your backup quarterback, you can do some different things. You can really rely on the running game. You can do different things, but in, the, in this case, at this point in time, you know, we just don't have it. You know, the Giants are no longer the 32nd overall pass blocking unit. They're the 31st. And the Dolphins have managed to <laughs> actually get worse than the Giants, um, which is good for the Giants because we need the defense to step up again um, this upcoming weekend in Miami. So it's going to be a tough one. I know Anthony's going to the game. He'll get to see this absolute crapshoot of a game firsthand. Um, you know, I never want to see Mike Lennon starting. I don't really care. I don't want to watch him. I, I want to watch Daniel Jones. I want to see his development. But at this at this point in time, the second half of the year was meant, was built for us to see what Daniel Jones has. So we can say, do we have to restart? What are we doing here? And now we're sitting here like, crap, We he's injured. Like, is he going to play the rest of the season? Is he going to play next week? Is he going to play against Dallas or the Chargers? We don't know. Now we're going into another offseason saying, what the hell do we have a quarterback? It's, it's really starting to get on my nerves, you know, because now the Giants have to make all these decisions with stuff that they haven't even seen yet with, with hopes and expectations and a new general manager. What if he wants a new, general, a new uh, quarterback? That's a discussion we have to have as well, depending on who they pick there and why they pick them. Um, are they going to retain Joe Judge if they keep Joe Judge? I bet you Daniel Jones stays another year. But if they fire Joe Judge, I'd say Daniel Jones may not stay another year. You know, there's a lot of things interworking pieces at this point in time, Anthony. But I do want to shift over to one thing in particular, and that is Nate Solder and his turnstile ass at right tackle. The comment that Joe Judge left us with why he is starting does not make any sense to me, okay? I posted a video immediately after this of Nate Solder being absolutely annihilated, pushed aside from JPP a couple weeks ago. JPP had a broken finger and torn rotator cuff torn rotator cuff and still beat Nate Solder's ass into the ground. It wasn't even close. So this is the comment that Joe Judge left. We're pleased with the way Nate's progressed throughout this year, and he's he's now playing uh, the way he's playing for us right now. He's a guy who comes out and works tirelessly. Matt's doing a good job progressing as well. We'll look to involve, involve him as well. We're using Matt in a lot of jumbo tight end type situations and expand on his role there. We worked early in the year on some guard stuff. Really, his home at tackle is where he's progressing, but he's giving us contributions along the way as we go. Talking specifically about Matt, we do expect him to play throughout the different situations and different games. Nate's taken the lion's share of a lot of reps, but Matt is always going to be prepared and expected to play. Um, is there anything more you need to see from Matt Pert? I think Dan Duggan continued to ask. No, we just expect all of the players to come out and work hard every day and improve. I believe Lawrence Tynes on his podcast said that the reason Matt Pert is not playing is because he's in the doghouse. I guess he's not exerting enough energy or or production or whatever during practice, Anthony. How does this make you feel? Because Nate Solder, I post videos every week of him sucking cheese, and I don't understand why the man still, you know, Joe Judge has the audacity to sit up there and make comments like this when we know we're watching how bad he really is. I mean, this is just bewildering. The comments about Nate Solder, him progressing throughout the year, putting good film on the tape. I mean, dude, it honestly sounds like Nate Solder is just his friend and he's just letting his friend play, right? Because that's just not true. We all know that that's not true. Every week, I mean, I have friends that don't even watch football that much, but they go, who is that offensive tackle that the Giants have? Is that Nate Solder? Yeah, it's Nate Solder. They're like, oh my God, he sucks. I know. Yeah, he sucks. It's really hard to watch him every single week. And I talk about him on a podcast nearly every single day about how bad he is because he is that bad. Nate Solder is honestly arguably the worst starting offensive tackle in football right now. And for Joe Judge to go out there and just say, you know, he's been progressing and improving and he's playing well, he's not playing well. I know that, I know, you know, Joe Judge can't go out there and just say, oh, Nate Solder's playing terrible, we have to bench him. He's not going to say that to the media. But still, he also could say it's probably time to give Matt Parrott a little bit more playing time. They're talking about how valuable Matt Parrott is as their swing tackle. I mean, come on, swing tackle isn't an, it's not an important position. Like, you could probably have Nate Solder play swing tackle and give just as much production. It's it's a position that's not on the field every single down. Right tackle is on the field every single down. And I know I've said this so many times. Matt Parrott, I, I mean, maybe he didn't play the best at some of the games that he played in, but he's a young player with a chance to develop. Nate Solder is over 30 years old. He's old. He's washed. He's never going to develop into more than he was 10 years ago. Nate Sol or Matt Parrott, however, is super, super young. He's like 22 years old. Let him play. He might develop into something great. You never know. But he's they just haven't even given him the opportunity to. We've seen him have good reps in live game action. We've seen him have bad reps. But you know who else we saw have good and bad reps? Andrew Thomas. His rookie season was the most up and down rookie season out of an offensive tackle I've seen in some time. Some games he looked elite. Other games he looked 
god awful. So let Matt Parrott play. Yeah, he's going to look god awful at times, but other times he might look pretty good and he might combine all of the strengths and weaknesses, learn from his weaknesses, put it all together by the end of the year, maybe by the middle of the next year, and turn into a competent, good starting offensive tackle. The Giants just haven't even given him the opportunity to do such a thing. They only start him when they absolutely have to because of an injury and it's on the other side of the line. He's a right tackle. Let him play right tackle. Instead, they just want Nate Solder to continue to play right tackle, continue to stink it up, get beat up by dudes with torn rotator cuffs. It's honestly ridiculous. I don't understand what Joe Judge is thinking, and I understand he's trying to give a vote of confidence to all of his players, but in this situation, to give this much of a resounding vote of confidence to Nate Solder is bewildering, and to go ahead and not play Matt Parrott in that position at all, also bewildering, confusing, disappointing, all the adjectives you can think of that will make you unhappy with Joe Judge. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, the reality is when you have a player like Nate Solder who is a 10, 11-year veteran in the NFL and he's making progress, that is not enough. It's not enough. He got paid one of the biggest tackle contracts in history. Him making progress is not freaking enough for a team that needs him and needs a good offensive lineman, needs a good right tackle, him making progress 11 years in off, coming off an unbelievably massive contract is a load of crap, a load of crap. And I can't believe that. I mean, I know Joe Judge has to say this. He has to have his players' backs. But hell, man, this is just, it's just hard to hear. And Matt Pert. He's in his second season. He's a far better run blocker. He's a big boy. He can go in there. You can run Saquon Barkley behind him. He can get to the second level. He has some speed. I think that he needs the reps, man. You give him the experience. You give him the live action because he actually has a future. You know what I mean? Like he's a second-year player. He's probably going to be a swing tackle for this team for the next two or three years, right? You might as well see what you got there. There's no way he can be any worse any worse than Nate Solder. There's no way. There's no way he can be worse than Nate Solder. He, Nate Solder has, won, has had one of the worst seasons I've seen from a Giants offensive lineman in the last couple of years. And the fact that he remains playing is, is absolutely abysmal. He, honestly, you said before, Daniel Jones hasn't been injured as a result of the offensive line. I am so surprised of that. Instead, he just fumbles instead, right? Instead, they just go – because people aren't going to hit him. They're going to get the football because they know if they hit the football or around the football, he's probably going to drop it. I think that's what they're conditioned to do at this point. Just go for the football. Don't rock him. Don't hit him. Go for the ball. And I think that's really been why Daniel Jones has struggled a lot in terms of turning the football over the past couple of years. He's gotten a little bit better of it this season. Um, but ultimately, you know, these injuries are piling up, man. Every year, there's something else. And even if he's even if he's playing, he's still injured, guys. You know what I mean? He still has um, a neck sprain. He still has a con He's coming off concussion against the Rams. He throws two intercept three interceptions and fumbles it. You know what I mean? Like he still had a hamstring injury and played the rest of the season through it. Like he's still injured. He's limited. He's not able to do what he's normally able to do. And that's a big problem for an offense that runs uh, runs the scheme a specific way. Um, so looking at this offensive line right now, I mean, I, I personally, what do you have to lose? You're the worst ranked offensive line in football. Like what do you have to lose but trying a young guy? It doesn't make any freaking logical sense to me. Um, the justification that Joe Judge offered us, and it just it pisses me off, man. Um, but this is more of a shorter episode today, just giving you some updates. Daniel Jones, day to day, week to week, next brain. They're expecting Mike Lennon to play. He did practice um, on a, on Wednesday. He had his helmet on. He was doing some limited stuff, but ultimately they're like they don't know if he's going to play. I don't really understand how he played the rest of that game. Uh, he spoke to the media after he's practicing all week, but is not going to play. It it's, doesn't make much sense to me. I don't get it personally. I don't really understand. Um, but I guess we're going to find out. I guess we're going to find out what happens uh, with Daniel Jones this week and what's really going on. But make sure to subscribe below, as always, my friends, on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm -hmm.